All right, we'll move on to the next segment of our program, Sunrise, this morning. And this time around, I guess at the beginning of the program, we had our 5, 10, 15 minutes on ranting and being unhappy about all the <laughs> terrible things happening in our country, Nigeria. And we expressed our concern and we were calling names of people that should come and explain to us as Nigerians why things should work this way or shouldn't work that way and so on and so forth. But this segment we're now looking at the, the good silver news. lining yes the good news in nigeria are there good things happening in this country can we really point at anything and say oh this is really great it's happening in our country so somebody has spent some time to see the good side of this nation and um, all of it being put together in one book so that anybody whether you are in nigeria or outside of the country and you want to get to see whether any good thing comes out of this place called Nigeria, you have an opportunity to see it. So our guest on this segment is no other than the editor of the book, Nigeria the Good News, Miss Kadri Ahmed. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much well, for having me. First I must mention came. that Kadri has been the uh, editor of the next newspaper. She's worked with the BBC as well. So I guess all of that add up to being able to edit a book of this nature. I guess so, yes, it all came together. Thank you for having me. Thank Great. you. Now, tell us, what inspired you in the midst of the madness that is called Nigeria sometimes? Mm. What inspired you to put together or to help edit a book of this nature? Well, um, to be honest, I can't take credit for the inspiration. Nigeria, the good news is the brainchild of the publisher, a guy called Peter Longe, who happens to be an accountant and, a, you know, um, he's in business, he's in banking. But he didn't have the skills to put it together, and so he approached me. And the truth is that I was very skeptical when he came to me because, you know, I've been in news journalism all my life. There's a certain degree of cynicism that settles in when you've been doing news journalism because all your reporting is the bad news. Bad news. And I thought to him, good news in Nigeria? Hell no, there isn't <laughs> any. And he said, you know, he persisted and alongside with a friend of mine, Uche Chibututu, also happens to be, you know, a close friend to him. They persuaded me to start looking. And eventually I did, and I was actually pleasantly surprised that there are pockets of excellence in this country. There are people who, despite the limitations that our society imposes on them, that are rising above the occasion and actually doing wonderful things. And so, you know, we sat down, thought about it, you know, crafted the things that we wanted to, to look at and, and got individuals, some to write about their stories, about the work that they're doing, and others to focus on sectors. So for example, we got Mr. Obiasika, who is a leading entrepreneur in music, to look at the rise of Nigerian popular music and is doing fantastically well and all the artists that have gone global where now they're international stars. Um, we looked to the governor of um, Lagos State, you know, um, His Excellency Raji Fashola, and he wrote an article about the work he's doing in Lagos State. We turned to Sanusi Lamido Sanusi Damajenkano, the CBN governor, and he talked about the reform he's undertaking in the banking sector. We looked to private individuals. Um, there was a man we came across who set up a microfinance institution in 19, uh, no, 2006. To date, he's given up billions you know, to, to people, especially women, and they're making a difference you know, in terms of the businesses they're running, they're able to help their families. And so this book is actually full of such good stories. It's remarkable. I, I didn't think these stories existed, but they do. Well, well, well. Cool. Yes. What you're about to call katanfu. <laughs> <laughs> a few teeth missing there, but that's not the point. <laughs> yes. It's some a child with a huge smile on her face. Yes, yes. I think she just received the good news. Yes, and I mean, we, we, we think of growth, we think of children, and children are the future. Mm -hmm. And that's why we settled on having a child on the cover of the book, because I think they epitomize um, freshness, um, possibilities, you know, of, of what is out there. Indeed. Yes. So Indeed. W when you then spoke with all of these people, like mm. the governor of Lagos State, yes. how did you get them to find the time to put <laughs> some of these things on? A constant because harassment, was... that's what it was, <laughs> you know. It wasn't, and, 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 and I mean, it, 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 I'm really grateful to them because a lot of them were busy people. And, uh, but, you know, I harassed them constantly and I tried to make the case that, look, at the moment there's so many things out there that are, 
you know, wrong about Nigeria and negative about Nigeria. And there's a certain circle of despair. Once I was won over, I actually felt almost like a prophet preaching the good news, you know, that there's a need for us every once in a while to step back and say, okay, what are the things that we're actually doing right? Because if we don't do that, then what makes you keep going on? I need a reason to believe in this country. I need a reason to keep telling myself, I am back in Nigeria, I'm doing my best. Because if you believe that nothing is going to work, then you really have no reason to keep investing in this country. But once you begin to see that, well, actually, there are things that are taking place that are positive, that are inspirational, then I believe that you begin to re-engage with Nigeria again, because we all need to engage with Nigeria if we're to make a difference. Like you said, you, you've worked uh, extensively with BBC, with Next Newspaper, and a number of other mm -hmm. journalistic organizations or, uh, organizations that deal with journalism. Yes. Now, the cynicism that comes with that, Yes. and then you have people writing uh, good news about Nigeria. Yes. Were there moments when you were editing this particular book that you thought this is self-promotion by any individual? I, I, in the beginning, when I first, in fact, when I was first approached, I was very clear that I didn't want to be used to do propaganda because I think I've established a certain degree of credibility in journalism in what I do. And I didn't want a situation where the name I'd established for myself and the kind of journalism I used to do was used to sort of just... Um, um, promote either people or institutions. And so I was very careful about the people that I actually approached and asked to write this. Um, and you will find that actually um, there's no one article in that book that you will read where I cannot publicly defend the good work as good work. I don't know if you understand what I mean. So it's something that I'm kind of prepared to put my credibility on the line for. And so it's not everybody I went to you know, because it's not everybody that is doing good work. Um, I, I was very careful <laughs> about the people that I chose, that I approached, and that I asked to do things. And, you know, there are quite a few people that are private individuals. Some I'd never heard about until I actually started putting this book together. And unfortunately, because of time, we couldn't even get every good story in there. So there's actually quite a few more. There are community organizations made up of mechanics, you know, drivers that are having an impact on their communities, you know, putting together things that are changing their communities, sending people to school with scholarships, et cetera, et cetera. And so these are the sort of things that, you know, I, I think are very important. What's the criteria for selecting something you can describe as good news in Nigeria? Because well, I, I it's think difficult for some people I to even see any. I think, well, th there are a few things that I, uh, good governance for me was important. And so I thought Governor Raji Fashola was a good example. I'm not saying he's perfect, but I think overall he's doing a good job of, you know, making Lagos work. And I think he can be an example to other governors, you know. I looked at... Um, um, people who in the private sector are using their own time and their own resources to actually impact on their communities. So for me, that is good news. Where someone who is not relying on government, he's not asking for hang handouts, he's using his time, um, his resources to actually say things that are taking place. Then I looked at sectors where in spite of the problems, they've been creative. And music is an example of where musicians have you know, risen above the occasion. I looked at someone like... Um, Fella, for example, he's late, but his music continues to be relevant. Yep. And, and so those, those are the sort of things that, you know, I, the criteria that I used. Let me take you back to governance. Yes. Um, Raji Fashola, Governor Raji Fashola is one of those that you picked. Yes. It would be interesting for, for you to tell us who, who else you chose. In terms uh, of what people in governance. That, yes, in gov uh, because the Nigerian yes. doesn't see anything good happening as far as governance is concerned yes. right yes. now. So it'll be interesting to hear there, who else you There's chose. no other governor in the book. Okay, who else Actually, spoke about governance? Um, we spoke to, um, like I said, the CBN governor. Yeah, yeah, but it is governance. Economy, you yeah. know, yeah, it's, 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 it's governance. I see governance not just in terms of, you know. Sorry, yeah. sorry let me just quickly, let's take uh, this call. We've got somebody online ah. who's uh, calling in. All right. um, yes. Hello. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Are you hearing me now? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Um, yes, uh, it's quite sufficient for the thing. Yeah. On the beginning to choose Nigeria, we want to go to work making Nigeria better. 
Oh, we teach people really, but we do Nigeria so the five most good things good things about Nigeria. Because if we continue to condemn the Nigerian economy, condemn our leaders, we will not make progress. So yeah, you were responding to a question. Yeah. Because, but because I think you know when people talk about governance, I know we tend to focus on politics mm -hmm. and perhaps people who are in elected uh, uh, positions. Yeah. I see governance a little bit wider than that. You know, governance is about how people run their private corporations. You know, the sort of ethics and the the things that so they put towards. So you're looking at corporate governance. Yeah, well, I'm looking at you know governance. governance you know across board. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I give an example of uh, the Damaji and Kano Malam Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, for example, the way he runs the uh, CBN, the governance practices that he puts in there, and the reform that he undertook of the banking sector is the most far-reaching reform we've had. So of in the last two, three years. And I think um, overall, most people are of the opinion, um, he has his critics, but I think overall people are of the opinion that the Nigerian banking sector is stronger as a result of some of the work that he's done. Okay. So, uh, you know, I've looked at that. And then, um, for example, I got a, a, a Mr. Tony Lumelu to talk to us, not about the work he's doing generally, but a specific part of the work he's doing, which is Using his foundation, he's bringing in students from Ivy League universities, from Harvard, from Yale, um, from Colombia, and placing them in African businesses. Not just Nigerian businesses, but African businesses every summer. And they're spending three months helping entrepreneurs, small businesses, African businesses who cannot afford, you know, the big... Uh, CEOs and the sort of financial gurus, but you know, bringing this new brains, new thinking to African businesses so that, you know, African businesses benefit from having these young thinkers in their organizations. And these young people actually then engage with Africa and begin to, you know, develop a love for Africa and perhaps consider having careers in Africa. I think that is just you know, uh, a, a very good way to have an impact, you know, on one society. And so that is one of the things, for example, that, that we looked at in the book. Um, we looked at our writing, you know, so we, we highlighted the work of people like Chimamanda and the sort of impact she's had with her writing. We looked at other writers like Helen Habila. We looked at people like uh, uh, Nua Bani, you know, um, and so... It is just that sort of thing mm -hmm. where people are doing well, and I think we should celebrate people that are doing well. One, because we want them to be beacons. We want them to, to, to be examples to other young Nigerians, to sell, say to them, look, things might be going wrong. There's a lot of challenges, but you know what? Don't give up. Don't give up. Where can one get this book? Well, launching. we're launching it officially on the 31st of October at the Wheat Baker Hotel at 5 p.m. Okay. Once the launch has been done from the 1st of October, the book is available. 1st of November. Sorry, 1st of November, yeah. book is available. You can order on our website. Um, www.reinventmedialimited.com, limitedltd.com, okay. mm -hmm. or you can call 0706 300 5300 <laughs> and order the book. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so you can order by telephone, you can or check online. online. Yes. Um, Any idea what the price is going to be? Um, we're still thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> We're still thinking about it. What do you okay. think it will be worth? Because uh, that's a lot of interesting personalities. It, it is. And the truth is that we think it's the sort of that. book that should be in libraries, should be Indeed. in missions, in you know, high commissions, etc., etc. So probably between fifteen and 20,000. We're not sure yet. Okay. We're finalizing those details. And, yeah. and, and the publisher, you know, Mr. Peter Longer, is very keen to get the book out, you know, to as many people as possible. And he will therefore do whatever it takes, including bringing the price down and making it affordable if need be. Okay, we've to got another sure caller online. Get to read it. Uh, yes. uh, the caller online, I understand. Um, very quickly, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah, let's have your thoughts, Chibuke. Yes, please. Um, just to say, uh, I mean, in a quick one, this one has got things to do it now. Um, just to say that I think that this is indeed a very commendable thing, um, you know, the lady out there has just done. But my only reservations is that, I mean, because she's just trying to explain herself now, um, I hope that this has not just turned out to be psychopathic. Because
because that's what that's what culture is going around in Nigeria, where um, people do these sort of things only to um, give credit, you know, to get something, you know. So if it is really altruistic, then it is a very commendable one. For one thing, in a country that has been riddled with corruption and bad process, I think this is another way, you know, to effect a comparison about the good elements against the bad elements. And yes, it is going to be shameful to those bad people in government, especially the people in the leadership positions, um, if they get to see that they have been omitted again in the celebrated book of this nation. Because I, I, I do hope that it would be celebrated like the, the famous Wuyi. All right, now that's uh, to the from Yeah, I think actually it's a very fair comment, you know, he, he, he made about, you know, um, the fact that it doesn't turn out to be this psychophantic book. And, and I, I think it was my one of the fears I had as well, actually, mm -hmm. when I was approached to put it together. So I was very careful because, you know, Kaide, you and I know I have a reputation, <laughs> right? Yes, and, yes, you know, yes. the kind of journalism I do does not allow for psychophancy. And so I was very, very careful. And I, I think people who read the book will um, be very happy and know that we actually um, went out of our way to be really careful to make sure that it is not just a propaganda tool. Yeah. These are real people doing real things, and I think um, um, we can back up what they're doing, you know, with their actions, and, and so we're very happy to put our name behind that so book. So when, when you've got so many pages of this, mm -hmm. and we know that there must be other people, like you said, the NGOs, they're doing fantastic work, and a great deal of stuff yes. is happening yes. in that sector. And you cannot capture all of it in one no, book. No. Should we be looking at another one coming? I, I think the, the pop yes, I think the publisher is <laughs> intending to do another book. Yes, you know, yeah. um, whether I will be engaged in that or not, I'm not sure at this point. It's a little bit too early. But we certainly have stories that we've, um, we've, you know, put aside because they couldn't fit into this, and that we hope we'll find a platform for. It does not stop, you know, uh, the newspapers. Uh, from sort of covering all the other things. But, you know, I think there's room for something like this. And I, I must say, um, it's important I talk about our sponsors. MTN Nigeria has been very supportive. Mm. Uh, channels <laughs> as well. Uh, channels, we might yes. be giving you an invoice for that. <laughs> no. Channels, Channels yes, as well, so you know, yes. and a few other media okay. partners that, that you know, have, yeah, yeah. Uh, and my colleagues them. in the media as well, the, the okay. journalists, yeah. All right. So. Okay. Um, so the launching of the book is on Wednesday. It's on Wednesday, yes. And that's at the Whitbaker. At the Whitbaker. Uh, what time? It's at five o'clock. Is it strictly invitation? Unfortunately, or? it is because the space is limited. Who are the people no. we're expecting to see? Channels will be there. Channels will anyway. be there. Yes. Yeah. Um, our chief host is uh, Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola. Um, the book is being reviewed by uh, my friend and colleague, the publisher of Business Day, Frank. And, um, you know, we have people from all walks of lives that we've invited to just, you know, come and help us, if you like, um, celebrate the good things about this country. The good news, Nigeria. Yes. Good news, Nigeria. There is some good news in Nigeria, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to get my hand on this book <laughs> so I can read some of the pockets of things that will cheer you up about this country. I mean, that is if you believe in Nigeria, which most of us still do. Don't give up on this country. It's the only one you have, believe it or not. Yes. Mm. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kadri Ahmed. It's been great having you on the show. Uh, that has been our guest talking about Nigeria, the good news. And the book will be launched on Wednesday evening at the Whitbaker, strictly by invitation, but channels television will surely bring you the story or the stories that will come out from that book launch and of course the book will be out shortly for you to procure and the pricing we don't know yet as the publisher and the editor have said so don't go away our sunrise still continues in just a moment